As you already know, graph data structure is a collection of vertices that are connected via edges. So certainly there will be different ways how all of these vertices are connected. And what are the minimum number of edges required to keep all of these vertices connected? So that is where we are dwelling into the territory of minimum spanning tree. And that is what we are going to explore in this video without writing any code. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, we will review what we know about connected and disconnected graphs. After that, we are going to see what is a spanning tree and how you can have multiple spanning trees of the same graph data structure. Among those spanning trees, we will then find the minimum spanning tree. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, we need a quick review about what do you mean by a connected graph and a disconnected graph. For example, what I have here are examples of both connected and disconnected graph. In a connected graph, if you see that I have all the nodes and they are connected to each other in some or the other way, it is not necessary that there will be a direct connection. For example, if you look at these two nodes, they are not connected directly, right? But there is a path between them, right? So this is a connected graph. On the right hand side, what I have over here is a disconnected graph. So if you notice that these two nodes, they are not connected at all. There is no way that if you start from this node, then you can reach at this other particular node. So that is why this is known as a disconnected graph. So as long as there is any path between any two nodes on the graph, then that is a connected graph. Otherwise, it is a disconnected graph. If you want to make the disconnected graph as a connected graph, we can simply do it like this or like this. Or basically, you just need to connect one of these nodes to any of the other nodes in your graph, right? We went over this because it is essential that you clearly understand what a connected graph is. Now, let us try to move on to a spanning tree. If you go by the definition, a spanning tree is nothing but a subgraph of an undirected connected graph in such a way that you have the minimum number of edges and still the graph remains connected. So this is the definition, but it can be a little tricky. So let us try to take up an example and then try to better understand it. So right now what I have over here is a graph, right? You can see that it is undirected and it is connected. There is no disconnected node right over here, right? Now you have to convert it to a spanning tree. What does that actually mean? If you notice in my graph, let us say I look at this particular edge. What happens if I remove this edge completely? So this edge is now completely gone. But if you notice, my graph is still connected. There is a path from one node to any other node in the graph. Right? So what you can say is this edge was kind of redundant. You did not need it for the minimum possible edges. Now let us look at another edge. How about this particular edge? What happens if I remove it? What do you see now? I remove this edge and still my graph is connected. So this was one more redundant edge. Now let us look at one more edge now. How about the edge between node 5 and node 6? What happens if you remove it? As soon as I remove this edge, if you notice, my graph becomes disconnected. There is no way that I can reach node number 6 now. It is independent on its own, correct? So that means that I cannot remove this edge. This edge will be a part of my spanning tree. So that is all you have to keep in mind. When you're removing edges, then you should not revert into a disconnected graph. So let us keep moving ahead and this time let us look at another edge. How about this edge now? Let us try to remove it. I remove it and you can see still my graph is connected. So we are good over here. What do you now think about the edge between 3 and 7? Let us try to remove it. Interesting. My graph is still connected. There is a path that is connecting each of the node, right? So as you can see, there is no direct connection between node 4 and node 3. 
but there is some path at least by which you can reach from one node to the other. For as long as this condition is true, you can keep on removing edges. But if you notice now, can you remove any other edge? No matter which edge you try, let us say I am trying to remove this edge. This is again causing me a disconnected graph. So I cannot remove this edge. In fact, no matter any edge I try now, this graph will become disconnected. So that means I cannot remove any more edges. And what I have over here is called a spanning tree. So basically, if you have n nodes in a graph, then the spanning tree will have n minus 1 edges. And that is a rule. So you know when to stop. So currently in my graph, if you see, I have 7 vertices and 6 edges. So I can safely say that this is my spanning tree. So what just happened? I had this as my original graph and I was able to convert it to a spanning tree by having the minimum number of edges that were required. There should be a burning question in your mind now. What about the order of edges that we are removing? For example, this time I had removed this particular edge in the beginning, right? But what could happen if I am removing this particular edge in the beginning? The graph will still remain connected, right? So that is correct. There can be a lot of different ways by which you can achieve spanning trees. In fact, for this particular example graph, we can have a lot of different spanning trees. And these are some of the examples. If you notice, in all of these examples, I am picking some random edges. But one condition is true. I am always able to make a path from any of the nodes to any other node. That is consistent. It is never a disconnected graph. The other thing that remains constant is all of these spanning trees have n minus 1 edges where n is the total number of vertices. So all of these spanning trees have a total of 6 edges, right? If you want, you can pause this video right over here and as an exercise, try to sketch out some sample graphs on a paper and then try to find out their spanning trees. Because once you have understood what is a spanning tree, understanding a minimum spanning tree is very very simple. I have the same graph in front of me now. But this time, if you notice, all of the edges, they have some kind of a weight associated with it. And this is what we call it as a weighted graph. So what does it mean? It simply means that there is some cost involved when going from node 1 to node 5. And that cost is 3. Similarly, there is some cost to go from node 5 to node 7. And that cost is 1. We will go into more details in my further videos. But right now, you just need to understand that, okay, this is a weighted graph and for a weighted undirected graph, we can create a minimum spanning tree. The definition of a minimum spanning tree is that you derive all the possible spanning trees of a given graph and then find out the total weight of all the edges in that particular spanning tree. So what happens? Let us say I take up this graph and I create a spanning tree. So this is my first example. And if you notice, I have all of the edge weights over here. If you add up all the edge weights in the first example, what is the total weight that you get? You get a total weight of 29, correct? So this is what you have to do. You have to create more spanning trees and find out the minimum possible weight. Over here, I have my second example. If you notice, the edges in this example are different. So definitely, the total weight will also be different. For this particular example, the total weight comes out to be 28. You need to keep doing this. I have my third spanning tree over here. And this time, let us try to calculate the weight again. The weight of this spanning tree is 19. Similarly, what I will do is, I will create all such different examples and then find out their weights. I got all of the total weights and the minimum weight I find is 19. So I can safely say that this particular tree, this is my minimum spanning tree because it has the least weight. And that's it. That is how you derive the minimum spanning tree. Of course, there are certain algorithms by which you can derive it easily because this is the brute force way. You are finding out all the different possible combinations and then finding out their weights. It is definitely gonna take a lot of time. 
we are going to cover the two most famous ways of finding the minimum spanning tree in my further videos. But for now, just focus and try to solidify your concept that, okay, this is how a spanning tree is derived and what it actually means. I say that because understanding a minimum spanning tree is very, very important. It is a concept that is used almost everywhere in every network. Think about it. You can have all these different kind of cities and all these different distances between them, right? So if you have to lay down some electric wiring in between them, you want that the cost should be minimum, right? So that is where you will use the minimum spanning tree. If you notice, all of my vertices are connected now. But with the minimum spanning tree, I am saving so much cost. My cost to lay down all the electric wires will be so less, right? You can have several examples that work on the same concept. Transportation, power grid, water systems, everything, even the internet. Think about it. There are content delivery networks or CDNs that are set up all throughout the world. And whenever you make a request, that happens through the minimum spanning tree, such that you get your request served fastest. That is with the minimum distance. So that is why understanding a minimum spanning tree is very, very important. I hope now you have a better understanding about what is a minimum spanning tree when you are given a weighted graph. As for my final thoughts, I just want to say that the best way to memorize any concept is to create some examples for it. So a homework for you is that you take out a piece of paper and draw some random graphs on it and then try to derive the minimum spanning tree yourself. Don't look for any algorithm right now. We will be exploring some algorithms in my future videos. But for now, just make sure that you are understanding correctly that for a graph that has n vertices, you can create a minimum spanning tree and that will only have n minus 1 edges. That is the basic idea. Make sure you are clarifying it completely. While going throughout the video, did you face any problems? Or have you found any other innovative ways to find out this minimum spanning tree? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority to reply to your comments. In my future videos, we will be discussing the Prim's algorithm and the Kruskal's algorithm. So until then, stay tuned and see ya.